Hey folks, today I'd like to share with you my chip chicken operation. I've been doing this all winter and we're two months into winter. Remember, if you follow my vlogs, we've had a, a very early, early winter and we're ha hopefully we're halfway through. Hopefully we're past halfway through. But we started hard and early. Really snow stayed from November 4th on. And uh, I've got 16 hens here, two roosters, and I've got a pretty sweet coop set up that I'll share with you and we'll also break down the numbers and what this actually costs to do. If you guys are new here, my name is Curtis Stone and my channel is all about being off grid and setting yourself up to be as free as you possibly can. So if you're new and you like the, the channel, so hit the subscribe, share and like the videos if you do. All right, so let's get into it. This is my coop setup for the winter. I've got a small greenhouse. It's nine feet, I think it's nine feet wide, 20 feet long. And it's very simple, simple skin, sim, uh, single skin poly greenhouse. Uh, it basically creates an outdoor space that has lots of light and is sheltered for the birds. So that's really good in our heavy snow climate. And my coop is really simple. It pretty much just fits my 18 birds, 16 hens and two roosters. I've got two roosting bars up there and uh, I've got two access points to this coop. I've got an automatic door. So this opens with the light and closes with the light. I got an access port here and there. And uh, those are for cleaning and, and maintenance. And um, I've got a little hatch here that I can just open to kind of check in on the birds or move the, the roosting bars around if I feel the need to. And then I've got another protruded hatch here where I can go in and there's a bird just starting to lay an egg. And uh, that's where I clean it out. And I just cleaned this out. And by doing so, it kind of made me think, well, why don't I do a video about this whole thing? Because I really do have a good grasp on the numbers of how this works now. So I don't think there's anything else to point out about the setup besides from what you can see it's all fairly straightforward it's fenced around and uh, the coops all locked up so when they go in at night and close that uh, no predatory animals like a skunk which would be our main one to worry about can get in there oh look at that blackie bruce just got in there and anyways um yeah it's so it's 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 safe uh, i can lift it with my skid steer which is sweet because i'm getting my plan with this coop going into the the new gardening season is i'm gonna move this whole i won't need to move the the greenhouse that's that's gonna be strictly a winter thing but i'm going to move this around and i've got electric fencing from my previous coop and i'm gonna fence off every uh section section of my garden i've got a terrace there terrace in that greenhouse i could run the, the chickens in that greenhouse if i wanted to as well i've got a little block of beds behind there i've got a whole block of beds here i'm building another one up where those trusses are which will move once we finish the house and i've got another garden block that's fairly big here in front of the cabin that we live in right now and so next year or, or the end of this growing season i'm going to move this whole thing around and these birds are going to be my little garden machines and they do a, a fantastic job and actually let me show you something real quick uh, that I just noticed today uh, before we talk about the economics a bit more is this is the kind of work that the chickens do on the soil. And, and, and I'm really starting to see it for myself. Like, look at this. That's beautiful tilth. Just beautiful. This is where they kind of have their little du dust baths. But it's amazing what chickens do to the soil with manuring in it, scratching it up, just working it. And uh, I'm hoping they can start to work on some of these other areas. But... Uh, yeah, that's this coop. So I've got um, a heated water thing for them there. And that way it doesn't freeze. That's very important. I've got a feeder here. And uh, this is this greenhouse is just on these garden beds, basically. There was three 30-inch beds here that this is covering. And uh, yeah, I'll take this down. I'll, I might move it around. I might just keep it here too for the season because I'll probably imagine... Well, for me, actually, having my, my birds close to this network in my uh in my uh sort of zone one of my homestead it's really convenient because in the winter i'm coming to the greenhouse all the time and then i can just check the eggs go to the greenhouse back and forth i go to my office which is up there going to this greenhouse going into the cabin next year it'll all be different because we're building a house on this side of this greenhouse but uh 
but it's working really well for our uh, our context and how we live. And uh, I put some other sort of outdoor roosting bars up there, just a couple sawhorses that I had from building and just put some dunnage on there. And they like this too. The chickens will hang out in that zone. And uh, okay, maybe a little bit about the birds and we'll get more into like my my feed, what I use, what it costs and all that. So I have 16 hens. There are two varieties. These birds were born in, uh, the ones with the little black there, the older ones, they were born in, uh, or they were, they were hatched in April. They were hatched in April. And then the ones without, oh no, no, it's the other way around, sorry. These ones were hatched in April. These ones were hatched in, um, in early June. And these roosters, we got Blackie Bruce there and Brownie Bob. Both those guys are getting their cock on really good, which is good to see. Um, those guys are born in September. So they're younger roosters than this flock. And uh, what I'm planning to do with my birds is continuously succession them. And the reason for that is I've, I've kind of just found that the birds, you've heard this many times, people, you know, the birds really only have so many eggs they're going to lay. And their prime, they seem to be in their prime right now, this year. And so what I want to do is continuously have a new succession going, just like I do with my vegetable crop farming. And my plan is to, I brought in these two roosters. Now, these guys are a different flock. They're not of the same genetics. They're totally different. I don't even know what these birds are called. Some of the uh, some of you folks watching might know. But um, my plan is to... And, and, and these guys are fertilizing these birds all the time. We're just eating the eggs. But come spring, we're going to, or, or, or say late winter, we're going to save a batch of eggs and put them in an incubator. All right, guys. And, uh, and then we're going to bring in new chicks. And what my plan to do is bring in those new chicks. They'll be separated for a while. When they get a certain size, they can get introduced to the flock. And then we'll run them with these birds for a while. But probably come late summer, uh... Or, or wherever I get to a point where the new birds are laying, probably early fall, I will uh, sell off half of these these hens. And I, I think I can get 20 to 40 bucks for them, I hear, you know, because they'll have two more years of laying, but their best years are, they're kind of peaking at that point, which is, which is fine. Some people want that. You buy a $20, $40 bird, boom, it's laying an egg a day. Great. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to auction off half, half the flock new ones come in and then uh by next season i'll auction all uh another half of them off but what i hear is good to do and maybe some of you chicken experts out there can tell tell me this because i'm no expert i'm just showing you what i do here you take take it for what it's worth uh leave the rest for whatever you don't like but um i hear that having an, some older hens in the mix is a good way when new chicks come in because they kind of they kind of uh showcase the, the 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 proper behavior and basically when you have a bit of a, a lineage in there the birds um integrate better and it kind of keeps the demeanor of the flock better so that's kind of my plan uh with all of that and uh, so now i think you understand the greater context let's talk about um some some of the specifics i'll show you what i'm feeding them right now and uh what i'm doing with the coop and how that all breaks down okay just coming into my garage here this is connected to the Paso solar greenhouse just so you kind of get where i am and uh yeah if you're new here we're off grid that's our whole system there i've talked about that in previous videos but this is what i'm uh this is what i'm feeding my birds so i've got all this going on in here because this this room is warmer than the greenhouse because um, I'm not really heating this, any of this actively. I'll run a fire in here every now and then, but I've kind of just letting the greenhouse rest for the winter. So I'm doing this in here because it's warmer. And I sprout and ferment most of my feed. And what I feed these birds is uh, organic hen scratch and um, organic 16% layer mash. And I go through... I'm just to make the math simple, it's actually a little bit less, but I go through one of these bags per month. So I go through those two bags in a month and uh, they cost about 20 bucks, a little bit less, but 20 bucks a bag. And I can get way more mileage out of that feed if I ferment and sprout it. 
So I ferment the layer mash and I sprout the uh, hen scratch. And so here's my new batch of sprouts. This is a bucket with holes on the bottom. And this is kind of how you make sprouts in general. It's fairly simple. I, I, I uh, rinse that, I, I give that a bit of water. You soak it overnight and then it goes three times its volume, at least overnight. And then um, you sprout it until the tail pops out. And basically I'll just kind of feed them that. And uh, it, you get a lot, a lot, you get a lot of mileage out of your scratch when you sprout it. It just takes more work. So sometimes I I miss it a bit, but I find overall if the hens get some of it, it's really good for them, and it gives me better mileage. Um, I, ideally, I'd like to have a setup where I'm just the sprout, everything sprouted and fermented all the time. I just find that I haven't been able to uh, stay up with it as best as I would like to. But I'm new to this. Birds are new to me. And so again, I'm not proclaiming to be an expert by this by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I would proclaim to be more of an expert in market gardening and, and, and farming and things like that, but but not this stuff. So take it, take it for what it's worth again. So there's my dry hen scratch. There's my dry um, layer mash. And for you actual uh, people out there who, who really want to figure out my numbers better than I'm going to lay them out for you, I can tell you because I have this written down. I filled this up November 30th and then I filled it up again January 10th. So I got a little bit, is that uh, a little bit more of a month out of that? And then I, uh, this one I filled up December 12th and filled it up again January 10th. So anyways, but I'm going to, I'm going to break this all down that it's basically a month's worth of stuff that I get. So, um, uh, so again, there's my sprouts and then here's my fermented feed. This stuff's not quite done. But basically, you just put feed in water, and then you let it kind of get funky. And you get like a layer of kind of gross stuff on there, but it's actually really good. And the chickens love it. The, uh, the, another reason that this is hard to stay up with, too, um, is if it's really cold. We're back to a warm winter now. Like, it's above freezing today, and it only gets to a little bit below freezing at night. And it's just kind of waxing and waning. It's all, this is almost like the weather we should have had in November, but now we're getting it. And so anyways, it is what it is. Prior to this, it's kind of prior to Christmas, we were getting down to minus 30 Celsius at night, which is crazy, crazy cold. Um, and this was really hard to do because even during the day where it would stay, you know, minus 20 still, I'd put this stuff out and it would freeze immediately. So this can be a little bit challenging, um, at the, at the really cold part of the winter, but right now it's, uh, it's just fine. So yeah, that's, um, that's that set up and I'll go. And, and so basically, oh yeah, what do I feed them per day? Um, they basically get a scoop's worth of either uh, fermented, a uh, 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 sprouted or dry stuff and, a, and, and about a scoop's worth of the fermented stuff a day. Um, but it, it works out to be four, two of those a month. I get a little bit more, but let's just call it a month for now. Um, and so that's 40 bucks a month in feed. That's what I'm paying for uh, those birds in feed. And again, you know, come summertime, it'll be a lot different and uh, we'll, we'll circle back then. The other thing that I do with my birds is I do um, a deep litter method, it's called. And I basically keep their coop uh i keep adding new pine these are pine shavings this is what i use is pine shaving it's it's available it's local uh it's it's a great product and i could technically start making this stuff myself once i start cutting more of my own wood and such but that's what i use and so i pay about 20 dollars a month in these shavings and and uh just basically like this and they're about 14 bucks a bag, I think. But I use about a bag and a half every month to put new stuff in the coop um, and uh, put it around and keep it nice and dry for them. I find in the winter when it's really cold, this method is so easy because their shit freezes the minute it comes out of their butt. So so uh, it, it, it it's not breaking down. There's no ammonium. Um, it's actually really clean and easy, but now that we're waxing and waning in the winter, things are, it's freeze thaw, freeze thaw all the time. And so now it's, it's getting how it would be in the summer, which just means a little bit more work. Um, 
essentially what I do with the shavings is as they poop in there, maybe once a week or something like that, I'll come in, I'll kind of scratch it up. And then that actually helps it break down. What we're doing is building soil with this actually. It's, it's pretty sweet. Um, and then once a month, I'll come in and either add a whole bunch of new ones or just clean it all out. And, and, and like I'll either add on to what's there or I'll just scrape it all out and put new stuff in. And that's what I just did today. That's why it's all clean looking. And then I take the older stuff and I just scratch it around here and I've put it down in here. I also put a little bit of new stuff in there. But it, it actually becomes, you can use it as bedding again. And, and basically what's happening is we're, we're building compost here in real time and the chickens are doing a fantastic job with it. And uh, so that's what I do. So basically the numbers work out as I spend 40 bucks a month in feed and I spend 20 bucks a month in, in uh, shavings. And those are all of my costs. I have no more costs. Everything else is... And, 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 and I should say, they do get probably a half gallon to, no, sorry, um, a half a five gallon bucket a day in uh, leftovers and, and scraps and, and cuttings from things that we eat. And we pretty much give them everything. Like um, all of our leftovers from our plate, the, the gross stuff at the bottom of the dish, the, the sink when you're doing dishes, all that stuff. And they get it and they eat it and they love it. <laughs> And they, 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 they cycle that biomass. So yeah, that's, that's how it looks. So basically, um, let's, let's go further in the numbers. So my fixed costs are 60 bucks a month Canadian. And then I produce about 224 eggs a day. And again, these are all winter numbers in the summertime. We'll have to do this again, but I get 224 eggs a month is on average. It's eight a day. Sometimes it's on sunny days. I'll get 12, 15, 16 eggs. But it's been like this since December 21st. So it's kind of crazy. We've been socked in. Still getting on average eight eggs a day. So that's 224 eggs a month at, uh, at uh, 60 bucks fixed cost. It basically works out to be, I'm paying $3 and change per dozen eggs. So um, it's not crazy cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than to buy the same equivalent. So to buy the same equivalent in eggs your best price, so to buy free range or uh, certified organic or just whatever, organic eggs, doesn't matter if it's certified, is gonna cost six to 10 bucks. Like it's getting, the prices are crazy. Um, so it's still at the lowest end, it's still half, about half of what I would be paying to just go and buy those eggs from a local farmer. And I will tell you that I would keep this going all the way up until at least par and maybe beyond for for some reasons uh and let me kind of think this through in real time i actually didn't think about this uh before starting to film this video but the reason i would keep this going to at par or more is number one it's it's an element of food sovereignty so i have it it's here uh, it's producing, it's a system that's working. So if I can't get eggs at the grocery store, I have them here. That's one. Number two is, I like the companionship of animals, actually. I, I, I never really thought I would I would be into it as much as I am, but I, but I really like it, actually. And we have a dog now, too, and, and, and I've been really enjoying having, having our dog, Roxy. Um, but I like the companionship of animals. Three, they are incredible garden machines. They absolutely are... I can see in the winter when there's not a lot of soil microbiology and turning over happening, but I can see even in the winter, the benefit that it's going to be for the soil, which is fantastic. Um, and number four, the bonus call it, um, is, uh, the, it's convenient to give vegetable scraps to them every day, then putting it in a static compost pile. Uh, I guess a couple of reasons for that is you turn the vegetable mass, the, the biomass over faster uh, and it has a benefit of, of feeding your chickens. So, so you might as well. So there's, there's four reasons there. So I, I would, I would do this, you know, I mean, you're going to, if you can't get eggs, you're going to do this no matter what the cost, right? Uh, as long as you can get feed and things like that. And, and uh, kind of wrapping this video up, 
um, one thing I'm planning to do or what I'm, what I'm striving to do. You know, all these things take time. You know, people, you know, armchair quarterbacks comment on my videos and will say, well, why didn't you do it that way? Or why didn't you get that? It's like, well, cause I only have so much time and resources pretty much that that could answer most questions that people ask me is, have you looked into this? Have you tried this? Have you thought about this? It's like, yeah, no, maybe. Uh, but this summer I worked on these things and got those things done. So, you know, keep that in mind, uh, with all this stuff. So what I'm striving to do is, and this will take time, but is to incrementally continuously reduce my feed costs and, and need for feed. And really what that comes down to is you have to be able to produce your own feed. So there's a number of things I've been looking at for years and I'm planning to do, uh, and introduce them incrementally as I can afford the time uh, to do them and, and get these systems running. You know, all these systems take a lot of things and just experience and fucking around with to figure out, like my off-grid system has been a total, <laughs> that's a total can of worms there. But all these systems take time to introduce, but I want to be able to produce my own feed. And so that could be in a couple, probably a few different types of crops I could grow. Corn, sunflowers would be sweet. Uh, and, and we did grow some sunflowers and I, or no, I didn't grow sunflowers this year, but I got a bunch from a friend and, uh, just the heads and I've been feeding them the chickens and they love them and they, they consume the whole thing. Eventually, like the whole head disappears. They eat the seeds first, of course, but they eat the whole thing. Um, corn, there's other things like, uh, quinoa and amaranth that I can grow that chickens will eat that produce a seed. And I'm looking at other things, other ways to grow a seed. Um, and then a seed that has a, enough protein, of course, and, and has the, you know, the, the dietary requirements that, that the birds would, would require. But the other one could be doing something like black soldier fly larva, which is people do that. And then another one is worms. And I'm looking to introduce worms next year. I've got a friend who reproduces them and I can get a bunch and then get them into our main composting system, which is a bioreactor system, which I'll, I'll show in another video. It's not, it's not dialed in yet. But uh, that and then have basically produce our compost, which we use composting toilets here. So we actually produce a lot of biomass every day. And you compost that in these bioreactors at a, it's a very high aerobic temperature. And then once you get it out, then you let worms finish it off. And that's my kind of my plan to get more worms into our whole homestead system here. And those worms could technically potentially help feed these birds. I mean, when I remember I visited Carl Hammer from uh, Vermont Compost uh, a number of years ago now, um, back when we could travel, well, you can travel again now, but um, so a couple, was it three, maybe three or four years ago, and he had a system where the birds ate just compost, and it's an amazing, uh, an, an amazing um, setup. If you're a From the Field TV member, go and check out the video with Carl Hammer. Just search Vermont Compost or Carl Hammer with a K, and his his setup is incredible. Uh, also in a cold climate, I think the gist of it was you can feed chickens can eat compost and just that, but you'll get about half the production in eggs, which could be worth it you just have a bit more bit more birds uh but if you have room for them why not and then you completely eliminate your food costs so it's something to look into but yeah folks that is my whole setup there all right if you guys liked that video smash the like share the videos with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check out my site from the field.tv it's where i post all my vlogs and the vast majority of all my content all right guys we'll see you in the next one